Hi, everybody. Well, I'm, I'm an investment banker by day, but uh, I stay up most nights worrying about the relationship between humanity and technology. I had the great, great privilege to be tucked in a corner three years ago at Davos, at a quiet corner at the Belvedere Hotel, together with Carlos Morera, one of the pioneers of cybersecurity, you may know the name already, and Tim Berners-Lee, of course, whom, whom is, is legendary. And that conversation that day centered around the trust protocol and the, the, the need to develop a trust protocol. That was well beyond my, uh, my capacity. But what I took away from that conversation was that there was also an opportunity to establish a dialogue, to create a platform for communication amongst the wise women and men all over the world who are developing, enabling, and using technology. And so this project began uh, with two very simple premises. The first is that the human is the greatest technology of all. And secondly, that in the absence of a global governor of technology, the burden falls on us. Again, the developers, the enablers, the financiers, and the users. And so we set out to begin a dialogue about those elements inspired by Maslow's hierarchy of needs, those elements that make up our ecosystem. Yes, there are more. And you're going to be encouraged today and beyond to be a part of that dialogue and contribute to the dialogue, the conversation around the relationship between humanity and technology across these elements and more. Let me just give you a little sampling of, of what that is. So today, African women spend 40 billion hours a year walking for water. But just one of the questions that we have is how can technology help deliver clean water to the 700 million people that don't have access to it? In the area of health, over 3 billion people have never had access to a doctor. So how can technology equalize accessibility to healthcare services? We'll need to produce more food in the next 50 years than we have in the last 10,000 years. And we've also learned that it's not just about quantity. How are we going to increase the volume and the nutritional quality, and how are we going to secure our food services? Rolls-Royce, now this isn't the first flying taxi project that I've been introduced to, but when Rolls-Royce is attached to it, it has a much higher level of believability for me. They're on track, I was informed two weeks ago, to deliver their five-passenger flying taxi by 2020. As we were discussing earlier today, that's not enough because we're going to have to retool the entire process of transportation management to accommodate these technologies that are being delivered. AI and robotics are expected to create 15 million new jobs, but also eliminate 25 million jobs by, 20, by 2027. How are we going to reskill the labor force for the future of work? At Davos this year, I was able to, to lead a, a very dynamic dialogue with human resource directors, CEOs, and chairs of major organizations representing over 2 million employees across five individuals. They are at work, they are aggressively pursuing methodologies to not only develop and apply AI and robotics, but to help students, to help their employees, to help the families of their employees understand how life is going to change. My invitation to you is to join peers of yours, like Sandy Pentland, Beth Porter is here today, Kavito Gupta will be here this afternoon with you from Consensus in what I think is the most important dialogue of all. I have the great privilege of being able to learn about technology and to engage in conversations about that relationship to ensure that the human stays at the, at the center of gravity in its, our future with technology. And so I invite you to join us. The book will be out on, on June 4. We had the great privilege of being able to distribute it to the delegates at Davos this year, which again, thanks to people like Sandy, allowed us to workshop the concept even further. The knowledge platform will come to life on the same day on June 4, and we're delighted to announce that CNBC will be hosting a 12-part series beginning this fall. Thank you for listening, and I, I look forward to having you as part of the conversation.
Super. Thank you, David.